All right. Um, I'm trying to squeeze in these games while there's still hockey going on. I'm aware there's still hockey going on, and I am tracking it as well as I can. But at the same time, uh, weekends have kind of become just preview and review time. And, and at some point, there's some fatigue for me. So uh, that being said, there's a topic I've wanted to do a video on for a very long time. Now, this will go into the Profiling Hall of Famers category uh, because this is also part of a debate I've been having for a long time. When people ask, who do you think was the greatest goalie of all time? I answer, Patrick Waugh. Patrick Waugh changed the game. He changed the way goaltenders played hockey. And uh, the, the, um, the, the craze of French butterfly goalies that came in not that long after he started uh, winning... Uh, it's it's definitely related. <clears throat> it it was it was basically the case years back that if you were uh, short, overweight, you were the goalie. Um, not quite as fast as skaters, other guys, you were the goalie. Not as in shape, you're the goalie. Nobody wanted to be the goalie. Um, I remember playing street hockey or floor hockey or any version, and nobody wanted to be goalie when you'd have like just a game of pickup with your friends. It was. All right, we need a goalie. Well, I did it last time. I'm not doing it this. Like, no, the goaltender was not a position anybody really craved. Then Patrick Waugh came in, and all of a sudden, kids wanted to be Patrick Waugh. He's drafted in 1984 without a lot of fanfare. Really without a lot of fanfare, considering it's Montreal. 84, 85, so in his draft year, he appears in one game for a period. Doesn't, doesn't allow a goal. And his save percentage is 1,000. So there you go. 85-86, playing on a Montreal team that is seen as, as an aging dynasty. Uh, most of their stars were gone. Guys like Lafleur and Schott and LaPointe. Uh, obviously, Ken Dryden was the goalie in the late 70s. And so this is a team that's seen as on, not necessarily on its way down, but they're not quite what they were when they were this juggernaut in the late 70s. 47 games played, 23 wins, 18 losses, 3 ties, 3.35 goals against, 875 save percentage. He wins the con Smythe. So underneath, I have his playoff record. Now, normally with players, I don't get into the playoff record. But what defines Patrick Waugh, for me, as the greatest goalie I ever saw, is his playoff record. So he has that 875 save percentage during the regular season, which is really kind of meh. Even, even for the mid-80s, mid to late-80s, 875 is okay, I guess. Not great. I think the average save percentage was around 885 at that time. So it was nowhere near what it is now. In the playoffs, he wins 15 out of 20 decisions. So 15 and 5. Uh, they win the Stanley Cup. He has a 1.93 goals against 923 save percentage. That was unheard of in that era. I cannot overstate how fantastic it was. They were aided a little bit by the fact they met Boston in the first round. Boston takes nine penalties in the first game, and they end up going out in five. So Boston, who may have been favored going into that series, ends up shooting themselves in the foot, which is kind of what Boston does when they run into Montreal in the playoffs, usually. 86-87. Um, so after winning the Stanley Cup and basically being a hero to everybody in Quebec, uh, he plays 46 games that following season. Uh, Brian Hayward played more than backups do now for the most part. Uh, 22 wins, 16 losses, 6 ties, 2.93 goals against, 891 save percentage. Not bad numbers. Again, for the time, pretty good. And he gets the Jennings Trophy, lowest goals against in the league, shared between he and Brian Hayward. Um, he goes 4-2 and two in the playoffs that year, 4.00 goals against, 873 save percentage. Montreal fails to win a Stanley Cup in his second year, and clearly he didn't play every game that season either. 87-88, um, he plays 45 games, 23-12-9 record, 2.9 goals against, 900 save percentage, and another Jennings Trophy. So still the best goals against shared between he and Brian Hayward. Uh, 1988, he goes 3-4 in the playoffs, 3.36 goals against, 890 save percentage. I do believe that was the year that Boston finally upset Montreal. I do believe that was the year that happened. So he goes out in the first round. <clears throat> in Montreal, this is doom. Absolute, sheer, complete, and total doom. But Patrick Roy will redeem himself, and so will the Montreal Canadiens. 88-89, he plays 48 games, 33 wins, 5 losses, 6 ties, 
2.47 goals against, 9.08 save percentage. He gets the Vezina as goalie of the year and the Jennings. Um, in the playoffs that year, he goes 13-6 and six with a goals against of 2.09. I've mentioned this is the live puck era, right, where there's routinely 7-8 goals a game. Uh, 9.20 save percentage that spring. So again, they lose in the finals to the Calgary Flames, but it is not Patrick Waugh's fault that they lose. In fact, it enhances Mike Vernon's position as the best goalie in the league, arguably, that year, uh, in that he, he outduels Raw and the Montreal Canadiens in the final. And that was a final that, going into it, it was really up for grabs. Both teams were fantastic. Um, 89-90. 54 games played, 31-16-5 record, 2.53 goals against, 9-12 save percentage. He wins the Vezina Trophy again as best goalie in the league. In the playoffs, he goes 5-6, and 2.43 goals against, 9-11 save percentage. So his numbers are still excellent, again, for ERA, and uh, Montreal loses out not because of Roy. There are a couple of times in here where you could argue Roy might have had a bad game. You might argue later on with Colorado that he coughs up a puck in his own zone in one, in one instance, but really, Roy was totally different in the playoffs, and we'll get to the overall numbers. Uh, 90-91, he plays 48 games, 25-15 and 6 record, 2.71 goals against, 906 save percentage. In the playoffs, a 7-5 and record, 3.06 goals against, 898 save percentage. And there's a feeling this is a down year both for Montreal and for Patrick Waugh. And we're prior to his last Stanley Cup, but Montreal, that, that shine has kind of come off at this point. Um, the, the whatever remaining aura there was left from that dynasty. Uh, now, remember, they did win the Stanley Cup in 86. It's not that far removed, but there was a feeling that Montreal needed something else. 1991-92, uh, he plays 67 games, 36-22-8 and eight record, 2.36 goals against, 9-14 save percentage. He wins a Vezina, and he wins a Jennings Trophy. So, again, best goals against average in the league, and he's voted the best goaltender in the league. In the playoffs, he goes 4-7, 2.63 goals against, and a 9.04 save percentage. But 1993 is coming. 92-93, 62 games played, 31-25-5 and five record, 3.2 goals against, 8.94 save percentage. Very un-Patrick Waugh numbers. But what did he win that year? The Conn Smythe. So he can handle a poor season, when you look at what happens when it turns to the postseason. And they won 10 overtime games in a row, those Montreal Canadiens. As a third place team in their division, they go 16 and 4. Well, Raw goes 16 and 4. 2.13 goals against, 929 safe percentage. So again, during the season, 894 and 3.2 playoffs, 929 and 2.13. Patrick Waugh in the playoffs is a different goaltender than Patrick Waugh during the regular season. During the regular season, on any given night, you might look and go, oh, he's okay, I don't know what all the fuss is about. Playoffs? Yeah, yeah, he's pretty darn good. 94-95, this to me is the season when it all falls apart. 17-20-6 uh, and six record, 2.97 goals against, 906 save percentage, they miss the playoffs. And in Montreal, this is absolutely unacceptable. Not going to work. No way. No, we're not. This is not working for us. Um, so going into the 95-96 season, Patrick Waugh, there's some talk about, you know, maybe he's had his best days. He's going to hit 30. Uh, we might want to look for our next guy. And so that's out there. And then, of course, uh, he famously walks off the ice after finally getting pulled against Detroit. Uh, tells Ronald Corey, I'm never playing again. Storms past Mario Tremblay. Um, never playing in Montreal again, and he never does. Not as a Montreal Canadian, anyways. Uh, he's 12-9-1, 2.95 goals against, 907 save percentage. And I remember um, newspapers from Montreal saying Patrick Waugh's best days are behind him, and this might be a good time to trade him. And there was some digging at him for the fact that the team's record wasn't Montreal-like. And so he gets traded. He gets traded with Mike Keane to the uh, Colorado Avalanche for Jocelyn Tebow, Martin Rusinski, and Andre Kovalenko. We can bury this trade now. I'm going to say this. Rusinski was seen as a good um, young forward, some upside, good scorer, which Montreal needed at the time. Kovalenko, kind of the same, not as high of an upside as, as Rusinski. And Jocelyn Tebow, 
He's French. He was a first-round draft pick, and he is seen as, as being one of the best young goalies in the league. This trade at the time it was made, we were stunned that Patrick Roy was traded. But when you looked at what Montreal got back, you could understand why Montreal took that package for Patrick Roy. What we never understood, and I still don't, is why'd they throw in Mike Keane? Mike Keane, one of the best two-way forwards at the time, probably one of the best defensive forwards at the time, and they gave him to Colorado as well, which is understated. We talk a lot about Patrick Roy and, and what he did for Colorado. Keane was pretty good too. So Roy goes to, to Colorado. 39 games played, 22-15-1 record, 2.68 goals against, 909 save percentage. He would not have played for the Quebec Nordiques. The Nordiques moved to Colorado, and that season he ends up being a Colorado Avalanche member. Uh, in the 1996 playoffs, Patrick Waugh of the playoffs shows up. 16-6 and six record, 2.1 goals against, 921 safe percentage, Stanley Cup. And this is the only time he wins the Cup, and he's not the Conn Smythe winner. Because he didn't have to be um, as amazing as he was in these two runs with Montreal. His number, his numbers are slightly lower than 86. Slightly lower. But uh, Patrick Waugh in the Nets gives Colorado an air that they didn't have before that. It, definitely not as, as Quebec Nordiques, and definitely not before the trade. After the trade, there's this feeling of confidence with Colorado, and they become instant favorites. Patrick Waugh, 96-97, plays 62 games, 38-15-7 record, 2.32 goals against, 923 save percentage. The most impressive thing to me about Patrick Waugh, one of the main reasons that for me Patrick Waugh is the greatest, he got better as he got older. Not only that, but he played more. He saved more. And you can say, well, he played behind this great team in Colorado. Yes, but his numbers were still better than anybody before or after him. Um, 1997, he has a 10-7 record in the playoffs. 2.21 goals against. 9.32 save percentage in the playoffs. His numbers are insane. 97-98, he plays 65 games. 31-19-13 and 13 record. 2.39 goals against, 9.16 save percentage. His numbers continue to go up. In the playoffs that year, they're out in the first round. 3-4, and 2.51 goals against, 9.06 save percentage, I believe. That was the year he had the bad giveaway that ended up leading to Colorado getting knocked out. But he will redeem himself because, of course, he does. 98-99 um, season, plays 61 games. 32-19-8 record, 2.29 goals against. 917 safe percentage. His numbers do not start dropping, even though he's in his early 30s at this stage, leaning towards mid-30s. Um, 1999 playoffs, he's 11-8 and eight with a 2.66 goals against, 920 safe percentage. And this is right in around where, of course, Colorado and Detroit have this massive blood feud, and Mike Vernon and Patrick Waugh aren't as friendly as they were in 89 when they were against each other as members of the Flames and uh, Montreal Canadiens, respectively. Uh, that being said, they don't win the Cup that year. 1999-2000, he plays 63 games, 32-21-8 record, 2.28 goals against, 914 save percentage. His numbers in the regular season, again, not fantastic. He doesn't get a lot of Vezina votes, if much of any, at that point in time. Uh, but the playoffs roll around. What does he do in the playoffs? He's 11-6. 1.79 goals against, 928 save percentage. It's insanity that anybody could post these numbers routinely and that they up, they up their game in the playoffs seemingly with ease. The only goaltender that to me stands out, I, I can think of off the top of my head, is Jonathan Quick, who's been able to do that. Um, there are certain goaltenders that really thrive in that playoff atmosphere, and there are some that don't. 2000-2001, uh, and uh, Patrick Waugh has maybe his greatest season ever. I, I think so, anyways. Uh, 62 games played, 40-13-7 record, 2.21 goals against, 9-13 save percentage. As solid as those numbers are, he's better in the playoffs. He goes 16-7 and seven in the playoffs as they go to the Stanley Cup. He gets the Conn Smythe as playoff MVP. 1.70 goals against average, and a 934 save percentage. It's insane to look at these numbers and realize 
Patrick Waugh didn't go out because he got older. Patrick Waugh went out because he decided to retire. Um, and he had a nice, long career, but he, he I think he could have played another five years if he wanted to. 2001-2002, 63 games played, 32-23-8 record, 1.94 goals against, 925 safe percentage, and he wins the Jennings Trophy for the first time since 1992. So 10 years later, the Jennings is his again. Uh, in the playoffs in 2001-2002, he goes 11-10 and with a 2.51 goals against and a 909 save percentage. So a save percentage drops below what it was during the regular season. And 2002-2003 is his final year. Plays 63 games, 35-15-13 and 13 record, 2.18 goals against, 920 save percentage in the playoffs. They're out in the first round. He loses it in seven, but 2.27 goals against, 910 save percentage. His numbers are still very solid. Um, again, I really think Patrick Waugh could have played at least, I would say, five more years if he'd wanted to. He went out at, I believe he was 37 when he retired, according to what I was reading. 37 to turn 38. I think he could have played till he was 41 or 42. And I, I don't think he would have seen a large drop in his, his game because he was so damn competitive. And he, he wanted to be the best, and he just strove to be the best. So as goaltenders around the league got better, as butterfly goalies started coming in that played the way Patrick Waugh did, these French kids came in who wanted to be the next Patrick Waugh, he continued to get better and better and better with his conditioning and play more games because he was obsessed with being the best. We can talk a lot about Patrick Waugh and, and what kind of guy he was and whether he was a jerk or whatnot, and yeah, on some level, of course he was. Uh, you know, his his rings may have been plugging his ears. He may not have heard what you said. But the the facts are the facts. He's number two all-time in wins. He is number 15 all-time in shutouts with 66, which is remarkable because he played a, a number of those seasons in the 80s when shutouts weren't really a thing. Uh, he's number three all-time in games played. He is number one all-time in playoff wins. And here's, let's get into the numbers. He's played 1,029 regular season games, 551 wins, 315 losses, 131 ties, 2.54 goals against, and a career save percentage of 910. Good numbers, but look at his playoff numbers. 247 games played, 151 wins, 94 losses, 2.3 goals against, and a 918 save percentage. He consistently raised his game when the playoffs rolled around. He has 151 wins in the playoffs. Your current number one guy for playoff wins is Marc-Andre Fleury with 75. And uh, Marty Berdur is number two on the list of wins, but he didn't, he didn't really get that close to Patrick Waugh. Uh, Patrick Waugh was, in my eyes, the best clutch goaltender I ever saw. His playoff numbers bear that out. Uh, he would have the occasional bad playoffs, the lowest save percentage he had after after 1989 was an 898 save percentage in the playoff. Uh, other than that, he had like a 909, 906. There are no bad numbers on the board for Patrick Waugh in the playoffs. You can argue that he had a couple of poor seasons as a starter. Maybe as a starter in the regular season, uh, he'd gone stale in Montreal. Thus, the trade rejuvenated him. But man, come playoff time, he was lights out. Uh, his jersey was retired by Colorado. In October of 2003, right after he retired, Montreal buried the hatchet with him. He buried the hatchet with them. November 22nd of 2008, his jersey was retired there as well. Uh, November 13, 2006, his first year of eligibility, he is elected to the Hockey Hall of Fame. I'm thinking unanimous vote on that one. Patrick Waugh, for me, best goalie I ever saw. And here's the kicker. I'm a Bruins fan. I hated this. I hated this so much. I wanted this to fall apart. I actively cheered against Patrick Waugh setting records. I cheered against him every time he played against Boston, and he knocked him out. Didn't knock him out every time. Sometimes we got lucky. And, and you know, at certain points during this, he didn't have a backup. He had Andre Rasko as a backup. Maybe a really great guy. Not a great backup goaltender. So for Patrick Waugh, there was a lot of pressure there. And I remember Patrick Waugh battling appendicitis and Don Cherry saying... Because the Bruins were going to play them in the playoffs saying, as a Bruins fan, I wish Patrick Waugh a, a, a really solid recovery of two weeks. Two to three weeks from, from his appendix surgery. Of course, he was not out that long. 
and he was pretty darn solid when he came back in. Uh, you can take out his appendix, you can't take out his heart. So there you go, Patrick Waugh, uh, a fantastic career. I've wanted to do this video for a long time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through, you just happened upon this video. And hey, thank you guys so much for all your support. I'll talk to you again soon.